Hi. Hi, Lance. How are you going? Good. What are we talking about today? So today I would love us to talk about yes. starting out with watercolours. Okay, cool. How to do watercolours. Yeah. How to become an amazing watercolour painter. Oh, sounds amazing. <laughs> okay. So are we going to focus on five? We're just going to focus on the five top okay. top tips. Five top tips, so keep watching and... Um, We're going to take you through them. Yeah. Okay, okay so tip, tip number one. Tip number one is what kind of watercolour paper should you use? This is the beginning. Yeah, keep watching. There's plenty of weights, there's different textures. It's all about the texture because it all about really the texture. changes things. So what you would call a cold press so it means it has a bit of a texture um, but it's not super rough and then you get what is called a rough and this is quite a bit of a grubby rough but you get the gist it's got quite a bit of texture to it and then you have the beautiful smooth hot press and so obviously that means it's just really smooth no texture here is we've got the the hot press on the top and see how it's like a creamy colour, but can also come in like crisp white, white white, not off white. Um, then you've got cold pressed underneath, and then you've got rough. And the reason you would be using a hot pressed um, well, you, paper? Yeah, you'll see, I suppose if you're doing a, a wash, and then shall do similar. Wow, well, you really see it on that one, don't see you? The texture, yeah. So once this dries, you'll see probably more texture on the cold pressed, which is the middle one. But also, what's happening here is the granulation um, from the particular pigment. So. So it's usually a good idea to start with the cold press. As um, a beginner? As a beginner, just because the hot press is actually so fine you're kind of going to see all your mistakes. Yeah. Um, the rough is actually quite difficult to, to kind Work. of wield around, so cold press is a good one to start. Tip two is... Check it out! Colour brushes. Keep watching. How many brushes do you reckon you should start with, Kat? I think it's good to have four in your box to begin with. Okay, so if I was just starting out, what would you suggest as being the best um, brush to, to buy? A natural hair brush to begin with, because that's the, the most important one. So either a squirrel brush or a sable. Nice kind of big round mop type um, one, so it's a size eight or even a bit larger if you can. Mm -hmm. And then you can have like a similar version but a very small small one. That fan brush looks interesting. Yes, Liza. So this <laughs> one is a good one for doing kind of landscape foliage. Oh, okay. Mm. Look at those great lines it's making. Yeah, so that's a good one to have in your kit. Not necessary, but it's a, it's a good one. It's a handy. One. Yeah, it's a handy. <laughs> Tip three, Liza. Tip three is what kind of watercolours? Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, that's tricky. That's a good question. So keep watching for to hear all about what kind of watercolours. Okay, yeah, so Jeremy watercolour is a great um, artist watercolour mm -hmm. to start yep. with your, when you're painting some watercolours. So we've got um, hand-painted swatch, opacity and pigment numbers are listed on the, um, on the tube, tube single series. Mm -hmm. Artist quality, yeah. Watercolor. Yep. Yep. And um, tip four. Oh, tip four. Yes, it's tip Eliza's four. favorite. <laughs> um, so working from light to dark. So you probably hear that around all around. You can actually listen to us and see. We've got some great examples yeah. to show you. See. Obviously, with acrylics, you go from you can go from dark to light um, because they've got much more coverage. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of flexibility in that but with watercolour what's the story there because that's where I get a bit confused you actually have to go light to dark 
um, because ultimately they are transparent. The, most of the watercolours are transparent, um, obviously not white, but um, even so you slowly work up the painting so it's in glazing really. And then tip five. Oh, tip five! It's Eliza's favourite. <laughs> Yeah. How do you feel a watercolour pan? Yes, it's, it's actually quite um, useful because those can be a bit tricky to fill. They can. Yay. And we've got a secret tip for you. Yes. So stay watching. Yeah. There's a few little tricks to filling watercolour pans, like pour the paint in and just leave mm. it. But there's some little tricks that you can do. Yeah. Yeah, Devo, so you want to um, pour your paint in only halfway mm -hmm. and then get a little toothpick and just get into the corners so if it doesn't leave any uh, air pockets uh, around the corners that's going to help prevent cracking later. How long should you leave it to dry? I mean I know it's always hard with weather and... Um, I think for the first like at least 24 hours. So 24 hours and then would you just sort of check if it was um, dry with your finger? Yeah if it's just a little bit tacky then you're probably ready to go. If it's still a little bit um, moist, then you want to leave it for another 24 hours. So I hope you enjoyed those five tips. So keep watching us for future watercolour advice. Advice and adventures. Um, and inspiration. Yes. Keep watching. Yeah.